Um, welcome to Impact Church again on behalf of Pastor Terry and Kim. Just want to welcome everybody watching uh, in TV land to Impact Church. We're so blessed that you're with us, and uh, we thank God for you. Uh, to morning, to morning, tomorrow, this morning, to morning. There you go. It's a, it's a new word. The Holy Spirit just created a new word, to morning. And uh, we're going to talk about the will of God. So how many of y'all want to know the will of God for your life? You know that's an ever, ever-progressing thing. The will of God for today, the will of God for tomorrow, the will of God for next week, the will of God for next year. Where will I be in five years? Where will I be in ten years? It's neat to uh, have that information. I, I know as a younger man when I got saved at 24 uh, after blowing considerable time in my life, my parents' resources, uh, quite embarrassing, I'll tell on myself. I was a six-year college flunky. I was in college for six years, and I had accumulated 32 hours of credit course. That's pretty sad, man. And, and I just wanted to do good, but I had no power to do good. I wanted to do the right thing. I was just loaded with shame and guilt, um, but when I got saved at 24, um, my everything changed. And it's like I had this power and hope of what God wanted to do in my life. And, and, and pursuing his will for me became something that was now obtainable. I had the power through Jesus to begin pursuing what he had for my life. And so that was like the burning question. Do y'all ever think that or am I the only one? Man, God, what do you, what do you want to do with me? I know I've talked to several of you uh, in those conversations and it's real, man. It's alive. It's like God is doing something. I want to, like, why am I here? Why, why did God bring me here? What's down the road? Well, I want to tell you, and this is a message I've preached every two years or so, so it's been a couple of years but this is out of Romans 12. And I think the word is extremely clear when it comes to the will of God for our lives, that there are steps that are real, that are obtainable, that are um, quantifiable, that you can like derive results and look at them and go, okay, this is where I'm at. And for some of us, um, if you know Jesus, steps two, three, and four repeat throughout our life right? So knowing Jesus is the first step. You can't know the will of God for your life until you know Jesus. That's why I had no power to pursue anything in my life, no strength, because I did not know Jesus. And so, man, I'm just getting tossed about like a ship on the seas. But once we know Jesus, then things be start begin to lining up because the first thing he's told the disciples was, come follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. So this morning, we're going to go through, and I got some kind of fresh download when I found out at 8 o'clock this morning that I was going to be bringing the Word today. I'm like, Lord help. You know, we all know the Scripture, be instant in season and out of season. And uh, Sherry was like, this kind of out of season right now. You, you were out of the loop on this one. But how many of you know God is faithful? So don't, don't think to yourself because God's word is new and fresh every time. So even though you, if you've been here for 10 years, you've heard this message probably twice. So maybe this is the third time now. But again, this is seasonal. It repeats each of these steps, two, three, and four, repeat de depending on where we are at in the Lord, depending on what he wants to do, depending on what is next. You're like, man, get on with it already. So the steps are... Everybody say it with me. Salvation, Salvation. Separation, separation, consecration, consecration. Revelation. revelation. You want to know the will of God, baby? There's step four, revelation. That's all laid out in front of you. It's not like, God, what do you want to do with me? The what do you want to do with me is the hunger bait to draw you into the process. Right? If, you, if you're thinking to yourself, the, the what do you want to do with my life, God, is the hunger bait that he's already put in you to draw you into the process. So if you're thinking that, God, what do you have for my life? That is a great place to be. And it doesn't matter what age you are. There's never going to stop being new things, new adventures. There is a precious man of God in northwest Arkansas um, named H.D. McCarty. This gentleman is 91 years old. 
He's a former chaplain for the Razorback Athletic Department. He's a general in the Air Force. Um, just an incredible man of God. And he's 91, and this dude preaches Jesus and shares the love of Jesus to everything that moves. I'm, I'm sitting with him in a meeting this past week. I go to get breakfast the next morning. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going there to get him a gift card because I heard this is like one of his favorite places to go. I don't even know he's going to be there. I walk in to get the gift card, and he is in there at a table with four strange people that he does not even know, and he is sharing the love of Jesus with them. And, and I walked up to him afterwards. I said, do y'all know who that was? And they were like, yeah, he told us. <laughs> so he kind of gives a little of his testimony. I mean, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, I used to be the chaplain for the Razorbacks, and I'm a general in the Air Force, and yada, yada, yada. And he says, I'm a Christian, and I love Jesus. And those ladies sat there and go, I'm inspired, man. That dude's 91 years old, got his cane, his Razorback hat on. He's standing at a table of people he don't even know when he's preaching the gospel. And they were rocked. They were like, oh, my gosh. So it does not matter the age. God always has a fresh adventure. Matter of fact, his ministry is called Ventures for Christ. He's writing a book. <laughs> at 91 years old so it does not matter so salvation is the first step in this morning i want to encourage everybody in here if you don't know jesus man you feel a tug at your heart just come talk to us let's pray he's that's the hunger he's put in you to know him he's drawing you and maybe it's a fresh rededication man phil this has hit me see he said offer our bodies so romans 12 1 is the salvation peace i urge you brothers and sisters in view of god's mercy to offer your body say offer my body as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to god this is your true and proper worship is a sacrifice what happens to the sacrifice is that th there's nothing that denotes in that sacrifice that that's a partial right when you're gonna when, <laughs> I mean, how do you say it we, i mean there's nothing that's held back in a sacrifice everything is given everything is laid down why because he gave everything he laid down everything and as good and loving and kind and merciful as as he is he does not operate with partial sacrifice he's just gonna sit back and wait go i love you dearly but you don't start living till you give it all right we don't start living till we give it all I've prayed with people, man, and dudes that I knew in college at Fayetteville, and, and they wanted Jesus because they were struggling addiction and drugs. But once they got free, they got free, man. They prayed. They got free. They were living right. But then they st I start seeing the pictures of them on Facebook with, you know, chicks every night, different girls. I'm like, bro, you can't trade one addiction for another. That's not how this goes. That's not a total sacrifice. Now we got people pulling out sweaters and blankets. So if we could just, uh, <laughs> if we could uh, hit that air up a notch and get the AC regulated, that'd be great. And so Jesus wants total surrender. Offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. This is the salvation piece, the beginning point of knowing the will of God. Amen. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So that aspect of offering your body, and what does Jesus do with a sacrifice? He burns it up. Who wants to burn for Jesus? Who wants to burn for Jesus? Offer everything. Give him everything. And I believe Holy Spirit showing every one of us right now what we need to fully surrender and offer to him as a sacrifice. And he's going to come in and flood you and fill that and light that area on fire and bring a freshness and a newness. It's beautiful. The next part of the scripture is separation. Go ahead and throw that up. Perfect. What do you mean? So salvation's first, right? What do you do next after salvation? You separate. You can't go on with God running with the same people. 
You can't go on with God not testifying about what he's done. You cannot go on with God around in the wrong place. So you separate. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Stop doing what you did. You're right? You want different results, you need different actions. You got to do different stuff. I couldn't get saved and not and still keep going to the club and doing this and doing that. Is there anything in our lives that we're doing that's not separated and is keeping the fullness of Jesus back? Separate from and do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, a surrendered lifestyle. Right? A surrendered lifestyle. The surrender is what facilitates the love of God moving in. Young people, Stephen, who else we got? There they are, Murph, Beth, Jonathan. Man, he's got you guys. Surrender everything to him. Surrender the relationships and let Jesus fill that void. Serious. When I got saved, chased girls for 10 years, I surrendered relationships. So Jesus, you filled the void. You be my girlfriend. When the time's right, show her to me. And he did. Some of us are in a place of relationships where we need to surrender to Jesus and let him fill the void. We need to trust him for that. That's living a separated, surrendered lifestyle. Allow him to get in your business and go, you need to separate from this. You need to separate from that. We've all heard of the drama mamas and the drama daddies. Do you have drama around you? Right? It's because you hadn't separated. When you separate from unhealthy relationships, the drama ceases. It's hard, man. You don't know. I've been around that person for years. I'm sorry. Jesus is calling you out. He wants separation. He wants surrender to him because he's going to give you a new group of friends. He's going to give you new relationships. They're going to bless you, edify you, and propel you towards his will. Surrender. Separate. I love this. Then he said to them all, this is from Luke 9, 23 to 24 attached to the surrendered lifestyle then jesus said to them all whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me forever wants to save their life will lose it whoever whoever loses their life for me will save it you guys feeling that we, we, we just are so conditioned to hold on to stuff in the world that we think we have to have, and Jesus is like, no. I, I've got a whole new kingdom dynamic for you. Relationships, people, everything. Most of all, myself. Jesus is like, I want to be your everything. And again, this is from the oldest to the youngest, and the youngest to the oldest. For all of us, deny ourselves. Deny ourselves. Take up our cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. That is so powerful. I just keep pausing because I'm just listening to Holy Spirit, man. I know I've shared this a time or two. But there's such life and truth and power in this. This is the Word of God. Salvation, separation, consecration, revelation. And I shared the testimony of HD, a 91-year-old gentleman, because I know there's... I'm 57. I put myself in the group. We're getting on up there a little bit. But life does not end no matter what age, what stage. God always has an adventure. And I'm looking at people in the room. Miss Carol and her ministry to the Dorcas women. It's not easy to do what you do, is it? It's not easy. Some mornings you wake up. It's not easy coming to church. Who woke up this morning, man? (laughs) 
It's rarely easy. Jesus didn't say it'd be easy. He only said it'd be worth it, right? That old saying. These steps are not easy, but once taken, grace fills the void and the wind of the Holy Spirit fills our sails. He is just radically trying to get us out of our comfort zones. Familiarity, complacency. Yeah, I'm used to this place. It's a nice, comfortable bed. Kind of like the eagle that kicks her eaglets out jerks the feathers out what's the next step thank you consecration that scripture says consecration but be transformed by the renewing of your mind this is the place where we just make time for God when I got saved I was like I felt the energy of Holy Spirit like all things were possible. I had this incredible draw for the will of God for my life. And people all around me were going, go to Aswee Bible School. Go to Aswee Bible School. I'm like, I don't have time for that. I got a lot of stuff to do. (laughs) You know what I mean? You might want to go prepare for the season that's ahead of you. A consecration, meaning to hold oneself aloof, knowing that you're set apart for special purposes, that God has something specific, real for you, and it's glorious, and it's wonderful, and it's who you are in Him, and Him in you, and it's this beautiful adventure, and He wants to take you on it, that consecration is, is that you are giving space to that. Givenness, surrenderedness. It may even involve, hey, Start having people over to your house and showing hospitality in dinner. Hey, go out here and start sharing the love of Jesus with somebody. Hey, look at that person across the aisle over there. Why don't you bless them? Hey, why don't you go across the street and share Jesus with your neighbor? These are all things that you've already thought about. Like the Holy Spirit's already been putting on your heart and you just, you just hadn't responded yet. He's trying to lead you in us to a surrendered, givenness, consecrated, could even be described as a wilderness experience, man. He is pulling you out, getting you to take some steps of faith because revelation of his will is coming. You can't just bypass and, man, I want the will of God for my life. It's a, it's a process, and this is the process. Consecration... Sherry and I, man, I'll be honest, it was kind of funny. When we, when we started the life groups, how, long, how many years ago was it? Five? Five or six. The, the first one was called Loving the Hell Out of People. <laughs> Does anyone remember that one? Loving the Hell Out of People. And that was five, six years ago. But you know who, who that burden came through was Sherry. I was like, babe, no, <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. I mean, I love you guys, but no, not once a week for it. Just, I'm sorry, a week in the flesh. Can anybody relate here? God's told you, you're like, God, really? Can it be in Hawaii? Can, uh, I mean, come on. God is calling us out. And the Lord hit Sherry with that burden, and it's like, I just had to be willing, y'all. I'm just being honest. I was like, God, do what you want to do. And I'm here to tell you, it's never been easy. We'd have it on Sunday. We'd come home from church, immediately clean the house for two or three hours, run to the grocery store, start cooking a meal, everybody over, eat, clean up. I mean, you know, that's a whole Sunday. What, no pro football, no nap? That's hard, man. Come on, you God, you're getting in my business now. Pro football, nap, chilling. We need that. He is getting in our business. Why? To expand our hearts and make way for his love. That's why it's called faith. F-A-I-T-H. No step of faith is easy. It requires a dying to self, offering the, our body as a living sacrifice so that he can move us into a new realm. In these steps of faith, they always involve blessing other people, helping in the nursery, door greeting, going to the neighbor, starting a life group. You know, you've heard it. You, you're just ignoring it 
or you're just trying to reason with God. You know, you catch yourself, you're trying to bargain with God, you know Holy Spirit's dealing with, and He's dealing with you. Yeah, you, you bargaining with God on something, Holy Spirit's all over you. God, I can't do that because, no, no, you busted. You cold busted, not just busted, but everybody, you know, the younger's the language, cold busted. Anybody remember that one? Oh, come on, you 80s people. Where are my 80s people at? Cold busted, whatever. <laughs> we used to say that. <laughs> Thank you, Harold. If, if you're arguing with Holy Spirit about why you can't do something, he's already got you. Just respond and just start, Lord, have your way, do it. Okay, okay, we'll do it. Consecration, set apart for special purposes. He's teeing you up. He's getting you into a place where he wants you to give out of what you've received so more of his love can come in and begin to flow because he's leading you in to something. Set apart for special purposes, consecration. I love it, man. And Joshua, this is being transformed in the renewing of your mind. Extra time in the Word, extra time in prayer, pressing in in worship, all these things, giving of what you've received are all part of consecration. Joshua 3, 5, Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Shortly after that in Joshua 5, the angel of the Lord then came and gave the directions for, to bring victory and breakthrough. Angel of the Lord came, stood before Joshua, that's Jesus after he told the people to consecrate themselves, then the Lord showed up and said, here's what you need to do. Everybody getting that? Yeah. Holy Spirit is telling every one of us, consecrate ourselves, be set apart for special, special purposes, to be held aloof from the, the things of the world. Separation, right? You're held aloof. You're separated, consecrated, Tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Revelation. Everybody say revelation. revelation. Then, everybody say then. then. You will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. How many of y'all want to know the will of God for your life? Everybody get the steps? salvation separation consecration revelation and it is completely up to us to surrender to the process and enter into that so after the consecration and joshua telling the people to consecrate tomorrow the lord will do amazing things among you then you get revelation and here's what happened joshua 5 13 through 15 now when joshua was near jericho he looked up saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? I love this. When he confronts us and like he starts dealing with us, we're like, What about them? What about so and so? Really, me? We're bargaining, man. We're like, and Joshua, the angel of the Lord, I mean, he's got the sword drawn. This is serious business, man. <laughs> Something's going on, and he's like, ooh, I hope you're on my side. Are you for me, or are you for them? And Jesus is like, neither. Now, now we're like, okay. God has a purpose and has a plan, and he is looking for a man or a woman and he is all about what he wants to accomplish. And if he's come up to you and he's saying, this is how I need you to separate. This is how I need you to consecrate. I just best get with Jesus on that plan because you know that amazing things are about to happen. Everybody say that with me. Amazing things are about to happen. Jesus is a rewarder. God is a rewarder 
of those who diligently seek him, of those who make time, of those who make space, of those who separate, of those who consecrate, of those who bring the sacrifice of praise, of those who refuse to be apathetic and complacent. Listen, I, this is a doing church. Man, I look at everybody in this room, and I see everybody filled with the love of God in pursuing Jesus. I'm just telling you, let's just be real careful. We're not settling in and getting comfortable and writing God off and what he might want to do. We every day, daily deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Surrender daily. This is daily stuff, guys. This is aggressive faith. This stuff doesn't just happen by accident. If we get stuck and we feel like we're in neutral and there's no progression and we just catch ourselves, God, what's going on here? Why is this all happening to me? Man, you look, you need to understand the angel of the Lord is standing before you. He's got your answer and he wants to lead you out right then and there. But you have to be aggressive and press into it. We have to be aggressive and press into it. So he said, neither, Josh. I got my own plan, baby, and you just need to listen. You do exactly what I say. You march around that wall just like I tell you to do. You blow those horns right when I tell you to blow them. Baby, you're going to see the wildest miracle. You're going to see your enemies routed. You're going to see it happen in ways that you could have never fathomed. Those walls aren't going to fall over. Those angels are going to be on top of those walls and shove those bad boys straight down into the ground. Come on with it now. Is that amazing or what? And he is a God of amazing things. I just felt inspired to share this testimony. I had a mind-blowing last couple of weeks. God was bringing stuff and dreams to pass in my heart that I've been saying. And, and frankly, sometimes you look stupid when you say stuff. But you know it's God. And the Lord said, Philip, you just keep John the Baptisting that stuff, right? You guys have heard me preach in John 17, 20 through 23 for 26 years now if you've been around me. But that's a rhema hot word from God. That's the foundational apostolic truths of his church. Those passages birthed the church on the day of Pentecost. And those passages hold true for all 2,000 years of church history, this age of grace, even leading into when we all go home. It is right there in John 17, 20 through 24. And that's what the Lord burned in me. And it's all about multitude because it's through his unified body that the world knows. Everybody say world. That God knows that he sent Jesus and he loves the world even as he loves Jesus. Isn't that what we want? We want the world to know. And I burn for multitudes. In a couple of weeks, you guys know I'm connected with Nick Hall and Pulse Movement. They're doing campus outreaches and reaching millions of students, preaching gospel to 330 million people all over this planet in the last 10 years, seeing millions saved, and they're hitting college campuses, man, where it's really going down in arenas and festivals. And I was blessed to be up there at their headquarters and meet some of the people I'm supporting Amplify Fest along with Sherry and I coming up in August. Man, it's the will of God for my life, and I'm just testifying that God's faithful, and he wants to do it in your life. And so I'm hanging out with the people and the leaders of, of Pulse Movement, and their crusade director was the crusade director for Billy Graham in the last years of his ministry on earth. The crusade director for Billy Graham. He saw amazing things, amazing man of God. He, he's just on fire, guy's on fire. And he's the crusade director for Nick Hall now, and I got to meet him. His son, Jay, is, is my personal uh, report and the director and there, and I'm connected with him. They're taking me to the airport, and he's sharing Billy Graham stories. And I'm like, come on, man, that's amazing. And uh, I, I just about start to cry. I watch Billy Graham and see him preach the gospel and see the multitudes respond. I weep every time. And I started sharing this. And, uh, and just that's what's really burned in us for the last few years. It's always been there, but it's just a consuming fire is a heart and passion to reach multitudes through his unified body in and over cities. And um, as we're sharing this, I'm, we're, they're literally pulling up to the curb at the airport. I'm about to jump out. Jay goes, Philip, you need to start hanging out with my dad in, these, in some of these crusade planning meetings. I, I don't... I was like, what? I'm going to get to hang out with the guy that used to be Billy Graham's crusade director and is now Nick Hall, the 
largest youth evangelists on this planet, crusade director. You talk about shock and awe. You talk about something amazing. And I'm looking at every one of you and telling you that God wants to amaze and shock and awe every one of you with his goodness and love. No matter where you're at, every one of us, we're saved. Let's get separated. Let's pull out from the drama mamas and drama daddies. Let's let him give us new relationships and new circles to run in. Let's consecrate ourselves to what the Lord wants to do. Let's make space. Let's get into the word more. Let's press in and worship. And we'll receive revelation, salvation, separation, consecration, revelation. He's got it. Every one of you, youngest to the oldest, oldest to the youngest. Father, we just thank you for this time, God. We thank you for your love and goodness on this body, upon your precious sons and daughters. Lord, that hearts are being lit up right now in Jesus' name.